Welcome. My name is Sandra Kiefer and this talk is about the iteration number of color refinement. The results I'm going to present were obtained together with Brandon McKay. To start off, suppose we intend to classify chemical molecules. So we want to decide when two chemical structures represent the same object. How can we tackle this problem? Let's collect some ideas. We can first model the structures as graphs, so vertices that are connected via edges. Basically what you see in this picture. When the graphs have different numbers of vertices or edges, they can't be equal. If counting the vertices and edges does not distinguish the graphs, we could try every possible bijection from the first to the second vertex set. But this will take too long in general. But as depicted here, it might help to color vertices with their type, the atom that they represent. If the structures represent the same molecule, they have to have the same number of, say, oxygen atoms. We can also compare edges between the colored vertices. In the structure on the right hand side, there is a red vertex with a white neighbor. And this is not the case in the structure on the left hand side. Thus the structures are not isomorphic, they do not represent the same molecule. The color refinement procedure combines all these ideas into an efficient algorithm to classify graphs. It computes a coloring with a goal to assign different colors to two vertices if no isomorphism from the first to the second graph maps the first vertex to the second. For example, in each of these graphs, we have four vertices of degree one, the blue ones. However, in the graph on the right hand side, there are two vertices with a single vertex of degree one in their neighborhood, whereas there is no such vertex in the graph on the left hand side. So these vertices are structurally different in the graphs and we can color them differently. And now, since we have different numbers of pink vertices in the two graphs, they cannot be isomorphic. There are generalizations of this procedure called the k-dimensional Weisfeller-Lehmann algorithm. They color vertex tuples instead of just vertices, but in this talk we focus on color refinement, which is the one-dimensional Weisfeller-Lehmann algorithm. The input to this algorithm is a colored graph. Then in each iteration it computes a new color for every vertex based on the current colors in its neighborhood. If the partition of the vertices into those colors is not refined anymore, it stops and outputs the current coloring. When the final colorings are different, we know that the graphs are not isomorphic. And when they're equal, we cannot be sure. This is the precise refinement criterion. Two vertices get different colors if their colored neighborhoods are different. So if the input graph is a path, in the first iteration, the two end vertices obtain different colors than the others because they are the only vertices with just a single black neighbor. Then the neighbors of the blue vertices obtain a fresh color, say green, because no other vertex is adjacent to a blue one. And thus iteration by iteration, the information of being adjacent to a special vertex is propagated to the center of the path until we are in this situation. Now, with respect to the refinement criterion, no equally colored vertices will be distinguished from each other anymore. Every yellow vertex has one orange, one green neighbor, every blue vertex has a single green neighbor, and so on. So this is the coloring that the algorithm returns after length of the path over two iterations. However, if the input is this graph or this graph, the algorithm terminates immediately. With respect to our refinement criterion, all vertices look the same towards the algorithm. Every vertex is pink and has exactly two pink neighbors. So on graphs with a single vertex degree, color refinement immediately stops and this is independent of the order of the graph. So we saw two families of very simple example graphs on which the number of iterations is very different. We define CR of n to be the maximal number of iterations needed on graphs of order n. And from our path example, we know CR of n is at least n over two. And because the final coloring uses at most n colors, one for each vertex, we will reach it within at most n minus one iterations. In each iteration, at least one new color appears and we end up with at most n. Can we improve on this complexity gap? A quite good upper bound on the running time of color refinement on graphs with n vertices and m edges is O of m plus n log n. 
However, let me stress that in this talk we are interested in the number of iterations the algorithm takes to terminate and not so much in the running time complexity. This iteration number is important for the parallelization of the algorithm and it has precise correspondences in other fields such as logics and games. For example, the number of iterations needed to distinguish two graphs corresponds to the quantifier depth of a distinguishing formula in the well-known counting logic fragment C2. This table summarizes the bounds on the iteration number that were known before our work. The first column contains what was known for color refinement. Krebs and Verbitsky proved a lower bound of n minus O of square root of n on the iteration number on n vertex graphs. However, as to upper bounds, there was no improvement over the trivial n minus 1. Still, at least for the higher dimensional versions of the algorithm, we know that the trivial upper bounds are not tight. This n to the 2 minus 1 is not even close to being tight. In fact, we have an upper bound of O of n log n right now. It is therefore natural to study how tight this n minus 1 here is. Towards proving its tightness, the task is to find so-called long refinement graphs, graphs on which color refinement needs n minus 1 iterations to terminate. This is a result from a master's thesis project at our chair, conducted before I started working with Brenton McKay. For n between 2 and 9, there is no long refinement graph, but for n equal to 10, 11 or 12, there are long refinement graphs of this order. Here are three examples on 10 vertices and their final colorings. You may execute color refinement on the uncolored versions of the graphs to verify that it takes nine iterations to compute this coloring. However, as you can see, there is no obvious structural property that qualifies the graphs for being long refinement graphs. Some are planar, some are not, and the vertex connections seem in a way arbitrary. To quickly summarize the situation. Brandon and I knew that this upper bound is in fact tight for some values of n. But we had no intuition about the nature of these values. Are the graphs that we have just seen peculiar exceptions or is there a systematic construction behind them? So the question we wanted to find an answer for was for how many graphs is this bound tight? The following are our main results. For every natural number n starting from 10 where n is 12 or not 6 at not 12 modulo 18, there is a long refinement graph of order n. Also, for every n starting from 10, the maximum number of color refinement iterations on graphs of order n is either n minus 2 or n minus 1. In the following, I will present the main ingredients for this theorem by showing you explicit constructions of infinite families of witnesses for the theorem. But before we dive into the technical part, I want to give you an overview of our search for long refinement graphs because it's quite interesting. As I mentioned earlier, we started our quest knowing the affirmative results for n equal to 10, 11 and 12 from the master's thesis. We then used Brenton's color refinement implementation Naughty for an exhaustive search and analyzed the obtained long refinement graphs. Unfortunately, this did not give us major insights and testing for larger graph orders was too expensive computationally. So we restricted ourselves to low vertex degrees in order to be able to go beyond n equal to 13. With the artificial conditions that we imposed, we could test for values up to 64. The large number of long refinement graphs we found and the insights we obtained by analyzing them allowed us to develop compact representations for the graphs and use those to generalize the constructions. I will now tell you more about those constructions. Let's first collect some facts about long refinement graphs. In every iteration, exactly one new color class appears. It has to be at least one, otherwise the algorithm stops, and it cannot be more than one because we would reach the final partition too quickly and color refinement wouldn't take n-1 iterations. Thus, long refinement graphs are monochromatic. We must start with a single color class of vertices. Furthermore, the final partition has to contain n elements, so every vertex has its own unique color. It is similarly easy to see that long refinement graphs must be connected. 
and they have exactly two vertex degrees. On regular graphs, which are graphs that have just one vertex degree, the iteration number is zero, as we have seen. And if the graph has more than two vertex degrees, there will be too many color classes after the first iteration. We used these insights to render our brute force attempt more efficient and let Naughty search for long refinement graphs with low vertex degrees. This led to a fascinating observation. Among the even order long refinement graphs with vertex degrees 2 and 3, starting from order 12, there is always a stage in which all color classes have size 2. Suppose that these are the color classes in that stage and assume they are arranged in their splitting order. So first the blue pair will be split into two single vertices, then the purple pair and so on. This means that the splitting of the blue pair must induce a splitting of the purple pair, which then must induce a splitting of the pink pair and so on. It is not difficult to see that, hence the blue and the purple pair must be connected via a matching like this and that actually the entire sequence of pairs is connected via matchings according to the splitting order. But there must be more edges in the graph because something must initiate the splitting of the blue color class. By our degree restrictions, one can deduce that this means one pair is adjacent to one of the blue vertices and another pair is adjacent to the other blue vertex. As we will see in a second, this will incur a splitting of the blue class, which will then be propagated from left to right. We also showed that there cannot be any further edges between two pairs. So all missing edges are within pairs. There must be one in the red pair here because of our degree restrictions. There can also be an edge, say, in the yellow pair. Now this is a graph with vertex degrees 2 and 3, but is it really a long refinement graph with a stage consisting of pairs only? Let's simulate a color refinement run on the graph. Recall that these colors here are just intermediate results obtained by color refinement and they are not the initial colors. Initially we have no colors or all vertices have the same color. Then vertices of degree 2 obtain a different color than vertices of degree 3. Now the neighbors of the red vertices get a different color than the non-neighbors. Notice that this is the only pair of brown vertices which are not adjacent to yellow, so the pair receives its own color now. Now the red class is split into neighbors and non-neighbors of blue. Then red is split again because these vertices have a red neighbor and these do not. This makes the brown class split as well and we reach indeed a stage of color classes of size 2. And now everything happens as predicted. The blue class is split into a vertex adjacent to green and a vertex adjacent to brown. And then linearly the splitting is propagated through the pairs. We end up with a partition in which every vertex has its own unique color. Therefore, since in each iteration only one new color appeared, this is a long refinement graph. In fact, in long refinement graphs with such a stage of pairs, every pair is only of one of four types. There is a pair that splits first, a starting pair. Then there are two pairs that initiate the splitting of S, we call them X pairs. All other pairs can be described by either a zero or a one, depending on their degree in the graph. We can then describe the entire graph with a string over the letters S, X, 0, 1, where we implicitly assume matchings between successive pairs and these special edges between S and X. So the string for this graph would be S, 0, 0, X, 1, X, 0. This slide formalizes what I just explained. We have a starting pair, we have some normal pairs of vertices of both degrees and X pairs which initiate the splitting of S. Now my claim is that all graphs corresponding to encodings in these families are long refinement graphs. Note that there are five different infinite families of these strings in this theorem. On the next slide I will sketch the proof focusing on this family as an example. Not surprisingly we proceed via induction over this exponent k here but for didactic reasons, I start with k equal to 3 instead of k equal to 0. 
This is a graphical representation of the member of the family for k equal to 3. Recall that we have a stage in which all color classes have size 2. We represent every such color class with a thick black node. In fact, since we know that the connections between the pairs are completely determined by their types and vice versa, we can also use compact graphical representations for them. A loop means that the vertices in the pair are adjacent and a straight edge between two nodes means the corresponding pairs are connected via a matching. And these dotted lines here represent the special adjacency relation between X and S. Now the splitting order is this. Hence, reading the string from left to right means traversing the graph like this. We first have the S pair, then the three one pairs, then two zero pairs, again three ones, an X, a one, an X, three ones, and a zero. First, the vertices of degree two, the zeros, are distinguished from all others. Then the adjacency to a node of a special color is propagated through the graph from right to left until we reach this situation. Now this green node is the only one with no yellow neighbors, so it is distinguished from the other green nodes. Again, the information of being adjacent to a special node is propagated linearly until we are in this stage. Finally, in 16 more iterations, which are not depicted here, all pairs starting from S will be split into two single vertices, which shows that this graph is indeed a long refinement graph. Actually, if you have a closer look, these middle columns here, they just always propagate the splitting from left to right and from right to left. So we could keep inserting more and more columns like this and the resulting graph would still be a long refinement graph. Of course, this is just a proof by picture, but it shows that there are infinitely many values n for which there are long refinement graphs. Going back to our table, this means that we can answer our question. For infinitely many n, there are long refinement graphs of order n. So, there are infinitely many long refinement graphs. Still, in the family I just presented, inserting a column increases the graph order by three thick nodes instead of a single vertex. So our construction does not cover all possible graph orders. So the follow-up question is, for which values of n is there a long refinement graph? Our theorem guarantees that, as long as n satisfies these conditions, there exists a long refinement graph of order n. In particular, the theorem covers all odd graph orders, starting from 11. However, the families I showed you earlier only contain graphs of even order because they are described by these strings and every letter represents two vertices. Therefore, it will clearly not be possible to use exactly the same encodings as before to also describe odd order long refinement graphs. Nevertheless, in odd order long refinement graphs, there is always an iteration in which all color classes but one are pairs and that separate one consists of a single vertex which we call a hat. This hat is unique and always connects two vertices of a pair, so of the same color. Most importantly, it does not interfere with the splitting order of the pairs. Thus, we can use basically the same string representation as before, indicating the position of the hat with the hat at the corresponding string letter. So the string S1 hat 11xx represents this graph which is obtained from the graph for S111xx by inserting a hat into this edge. We will now see a compact graphical representation of this hat graph too. A hat is represented by a small node inserted into the loop at the vertex pair which the hat connects. This is the splitting order of the pairs. Recall that a black node represents two original vertices. So this is the S pair, this is the special pair with a hat, followed by two normal pairs of vertices of degree 3 and the special X pairs. Let's simulate a run of color refinement to see that this is indeed a long refinement graph. The first vertex that receives its own color is the hat, since it is the only one of degree 2. In the next iteration, its neighbors receive their own color because they are adjacent to the hat. 
Then again, their neighbors are distinguished from all others. And now the blue class is split into two nodes because this node has blue neighbors and this node does not. This has the effect that this particular node becomes special because it is the only one adjacent to the dark blue node. Now we are in a stage in which there is one color class consisting of more than two vertices, namely all four vertices contained in the two x's, while all other color classes are pairs or singletons already. Next, the yellow x color class is split because the top node has a green neighbor while the bottom one does not. Now, as we have seen with other examples earlier, this splitting induces the splitting of the light blue node into two single vertices, which will then be propagated according to the splitting order of the pairs. Altogether, we have 12 iterations on a graph of order 13, so the graph is indeed a long refinement graph. In fact, by modifying the infinite families of even order long refinement graphs that we found, we obtain the following nice insight. For every odd graph order starting from 11, there is a long refinement graph of that order. The only gaps that remain for the general statement are the ones with n modulo 18 equal to 6 or 12. Nevertheless, by a simple modification of our graphs, we can show that for every n starting from 10, the iteration number is either n minus 2 or n minus 1. So, for all n which are at least 10, n minus 1 is actually tied up to an additive constant of 1 as a lower bound. Summing up, we improved upon the previously best known lower bound of n minus o of square root of n to n minus 2 and we showed that the trivial upper bound n minus 1 is tied for all n included in our main theorem. A natural follow-up project would be to determine if the upper bound n minus 1 is also tied for the values of n that our main theorem skips. Or said in other words, we still want to know for which values of n are there long refinement graphs of order n. In this talk I discussed the first two items here, and the smallest number for which the question is still open is 24. We have some partial negative results here for certain degree combinations, but not a definite answer yet. Another interesting question would be, for which degree pairs are there long refinement graphs with those vertex degrees? Allowing higher degrees renders the graphs more complex, but it is not clear whether this is actually helpful to get long refinement graphs. Instead of the degrees, we can also consider other graph parameters. For example, the girth. The girth of a graph is the length of a shortest cycle in it. Somewhat surprisingly, all the graphs that we have found have low girth, but there is no obvious reason why this should hold in general. So can we find long refinement graphs with arbitrarily high girth? Finally, to actually interpret our results as a lower bound on the descriptive complexity of a graph, we would actually need pairs of graphs on which the colorings computed by color refinement only differ after the n minus first iteration. That is, we want pairs of long refinement graphs of equal order n which are not distinguished before the n minus first iteration. Our results do yield pairs of graphs of equal order, but so far we have not found any long refinement graphs that agree on all intermediate computed colorings but differ on the final color refinement output. Thank you very much for watching this video and feel free to contact me about it.